In this review, we're going to compare two lenses, the Canon 24mm f2.8, also known as the Pancake lens, and the Canon EF 50mm f1.8, also known as the Thrifty 50. I'll tell you what both of these lenses excel at, and we'll also talk about the issues that they both have. First off, let's cover aperture and focal length. When it comes to aperture, the 50mm lens opens up to f1.8, while the 24mm lens opens up to f2.8. Next up, in terms of aperture, the EF 50mm f1.8 lens wins hands down as it opens the widest, which in turn allows in more light. This is very important when you're shooting in low light conditions, as more light reaching the sensor of the camera means a clearer image. When it comes to focal length, both lenses are classed as prime. This means that they can't be zoomed in and out and are instead static. Now, 24mm and 50mm will produce different results, and we'll get into that in a bit, but what you need to bear in mind for now is that they're fixed at that focal length. So, is that a good thing or a bad thing? A variable lens obviously has the advantage of being able to zoom in and out, but the not-so-obvious advantage of a prime lens is that it produces sharper images overall. Okay, so what does a 24mm lens do different to a 50mm lens? A 24mm lens is wider, which means that you can fit more in frame. A 50mm lens is more zoomed in compared to 24mm, and so you can capture things from more of a distance. The focal length also distorts the image slightly differently. For example, when you take a portrait, the focal length of your lens will actually somewhat distort the facial features and head shape of your subject. The ideal focal length for humans is considered to be around 85mm, to which the 50mm lens is closer. In fact, if you use the 50mm lens on a crop sensor camera, like the Canon 77D for example, the crop sensor will actually cause the image to be more zoomed in. In a sense, it changes the focal length of the lens, making it 50mm times 1.6, which is 80mm. As a result, the 50mm lens will work more like an 80mm lens on a camera like that, thus producing theoretically more flattering portraits. As a quick side note, later on in the review we'll cover which camera can actually use this lens, and which cannot. Now, you can take portraits with both of these lenses, and I will show you some examples in a bit, but the 50mm lens would, at least in the theory, be more suitable for that. So, which lens wins this category? When it comes to aperture, the EF 50mm f1.8 lens wins, as it opens wider and thus allows in more light, compared to the 24mm f2.8, but when it comes to focal length, there is no clear winner. Focal length isn't necessarily better or worse, it just depends on what you want to do with the lens when you're out and about taking photos. Speaking of carrying them out and about, how portable are they? Both of these lenses are relatively compact, which is ideal when carrying them around, but one of them is the clear winner, at least in this regard. The Canon EF 24mm lens measures 68.2 by 22.8mm, or 2.69 by 0.9 inches, and weighs in at 125 grams, or 4.41 ounces. The EF 50mm f1.8 lens measures 69.2 by 39.3mm, or 2.7 by 1.6 inches, and weighs in at 160 grams, or 5.7 ounces. Clearly, the 24mm lens is significantly flatter, hence its nickname. Right, so the 24mm wins in terms of being the smallest. What is their build quality like? Unfortunately, both are quite plasticky. On the other hand though, both have metal mounts, which is great. Cool, so we're covered in terms of portability and versatility. Now, let's talk about what kind of images these two lenses can produce. First things first, let's cover their minimum focusing distance, as this is something you're likely to come across really early on. When you do, if you're new to photography, this will confuse you greatly. I know I sure was confused when I first came across it. So, let's say that you're trying to get really up close to your subject. Maybe you're trying to photograph a flower or a similar static subject, and so you get really close to it. But wait, something's wrong. The camera won't focus on it. What's wrong? If I take a step back, it focuses just fine, but if I get really close, it won't. Why is that? Well, you've just come across the concept of minimum focusing distance. 
Just like the human eye, a lens has a minimum distance that it needs to have from a subject in order to focus. If it's too close, it just won't be able to. In the case of the 24mm lens, its minimum distance is 16cm or 6.3 inches. On the other hand, in the case of the Canon EF 50mm f1.8 lens, you will need to be at least 35cm or 13.78 inches away. If you get closer to your subject than this, focusing just won't work, so please keep that in mind. Okay, don't get too close to the subject, got it. What's next? Well, next up is sharpness. So, budget cameras tend to not be evenly sharp across the frame. In the case of both cameras, they are sharper in the center than the edges of the frame. In all fairness, this isn't a huge problem, as your subject will probably mostly be in the center of the frame, or at least close to it. Plus, you'd really have to zoom in in order to be able to observe the differences between the pixels in the center of the image and those closer to the edge. Right, what about vignetting? When examining photos closely, you'll notice that some of them have slightly darkened corners. This is what vignetting is, and it is, at least technically, an issue. As I've mentioned before on this channel, I actually quite like vignetting in my photos, as I mostly do portraits, and thus the darker corners naturally lead your eyes to the lighter center, where the model's face is. Vignetting also tends to add more depth to an image, making it look almost 3D in nature. Now, another optical issue you need to be aware of is chromatic aberration, which can be exhibited by both of these lenses under the right circumstances. When taking photos in the evening, you might be able to spot chromatic aberration along some of these straight lines in your photos. This usually manifests as a kind of magenta, blue and greenish bleed around said edges. While it is technically an optical defect, I personally quite like the way it looks in some instances, and again, most people will never notice it. Even if they do, they won't really know what it is, and they definitely won't know that it is a technical defect to do with the lens. Now, something that you should worry about when it comes to lenses is whether or not they have optical image stabilization built in. Unfortunately, neither of these lenses does. This is a very useful feature, which can be found in very few budget lenses. What IS does is it stabilizes the image optically, as opposed to digitally, thus enabling you to shoot smoother video, and it also makes it less likely that you'll get motion blur when taking photos with a slow shutter speed. We'll get into video in a little bit actually, so stay tuned for that. Before we move on, how well do these lenses autofocus? Both of these lenses have STM in the name, which is short for Canon Stepper Motor. This motor makes it so that the lenses focus more smoothly and more quietly, whilst also, at least theoretically, giving the lenses a relatively longer lifespan due to the internal mechanics. The quieter part is super useful for video, which we'll get into in a bit. By the way, if you're finding this video to be helpful, don't forget to leave a like. Now, let's continue. Before we discuss video, which cameras are these lenses actually compatible with? The clue lies in the name. The Canon EF S 24mm f2.8 is designed for Canon's more affordable cameras. A lot of its lower priced DSLRs, like the Rebel range, have EF slash EFS mounts, which means that they can take both EF and EFS lenses. On the other hand, the lens would not work on Canon cameras which have an EF only mount, like the Canon 6D. The EF 50mm lens, as the name suggests, works with EF mounts, which means that it can go on both EF only cameras and also on EF slash EFS cameras as well. That's the majority of Canon's DSLRs. As a quick side note, I've reviewed quite a few Canon cameras on this channel. Link down below for the playlist, or click the card in the top right corner. Right, so these lenses can be installed on quite a few cameras. How good are they when it comes to vlogging? Uh, neither of them is great, but one is definitely better than the other. Allow me to explain. So, as mentioned earlier, neither of them has built an IS, which is a problem, as your footage will be quite shaky. This will occur with both of these lenses. The handheld footage that you're seeing right now was shot with a Canon EF 50mm f1.8, but it was filmed with a Canon R5 with an adapter. And the reason why it looks so smooth is that it's filmed at 120fps, and the R5 has in-body image stabilization. The EF 50mm f1.8 has a further problem, which is that it is too zoomed in for vlogging. 
The 50mm focal length is already quite zoomed in, and if you mount the lens on an APS-C camera, as mentioned earlier, it will be an 80mm equivalent. That's just far too zoomed in for handheld vlogging. However, the 24mm lens would be more suitable, and you'd be able to fit yourself way better in frame. At a budget level, the best lens for vlogging would actually be the Canon EFS 18-55mm kit lens, surprisingly enough, as it has IS. That lens does also have its disadvantages though. By the way, not all 18-55mm kit lenses have IS, only the ones that actually have IS in the name. I've reviewed the EFS 24mm f2.8 lens and the kit lens individually on this channel, and I'll also make a comparison video of them soon, so if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe. Right, so the 50mm lens isn't great for handheld vlogging. What if I just want to sit down and place my camera on a tripod? Would that work? Yeah, it would. And that lens would actually do a far better job than the EFS 24mm lens. Why? Well, the EF 50mm f1.8 not only allows in more light, which would allow you to film in more dimly lit environments, but it also produces more bokeh. Bokeh is that nice blurry background that everyone loves. So if you're going to film yourself with the camera on a tripod, i definitely go for the 50mm lens instead of the 24mm one. Okay, got it. So what instances are these lenses useful in? We've discussed vlogging and making sit down videos. What about everything else? Let's start with portraits. Both can do portraits, especially if you don't get too close to your subject with the 24mm lens. Ideally, I'd mostly use the EF 50mm f1.8 lens for that, but both can work. What if I want to do street photography? In that case, both of them work, but for different reasons. The 24mm lens gives you more of a general feel of a space, while the 50mm lens allows you to get details. Also, neither lens is particularly large, which is great as they won't intimidate people quite as much. When doing street photography, the more compact your setup is, the better, generally speaking. Okay, what if I want to do product photography? I'd go for the 50mm lens in that case. It's quite a bit more zoomed in, so it should allow you to get some nice close-up details. Also, again, it performs better in low light conditions. Right, what about landscape photos? Either would work, though if you're just getting started, I'd go for the EFS 24mm lens. How about fashion photography? Definitely the EF 50mm lens, as I'd say it's more suitable for portraits, and thus it would work well with fashion. What about documentary style shooting? Hmm, in that case, probably the EFS 24mm lens. Why? Well, presumably you'd want to capture more in frame as opposed to less. When documenting events, it's probably better to be a bit too far away than a bit too zoomed in. What about sports or wildlife photography? For that, neither lens is ideal, but the EF 50mm one is better as it is more zoomed in. Neither will really allow you to get close enough to the action. If you want a lens that would work better for that on a budget, have a look at my review of the Canon 75-300mm lens, link down below, or click the card in the top right corner. Okay, what if I want to photograph events or weddings? Which would be better? If you want to capture groups, the EFS 24mm lens is wider and thus better. When going in to capture details, swap the 24mm lens for the EF 50mm lens. It's zoomed out enough that you can capture details without having to get too close to the subject. What if I don't know what I want and I just want a lens that can kinda do most things well? Both would work for that, but I'd go for the EF 50mm f1.8 lens as it opens up more than the EFS 24mm f2.8 lens, and thus you get more light. This would allow you to take cleaner photos in more environments, so on that logic, the 50mm lens would win in this context. Okay, so when using them, how do they handle? How easy are they to use? So neither of them has zoom rings, as they are prime lenses, but they have focus rings. The rings are fairly smooth, but they can become less smooth after a few years of use. Other than that, they have the usual AF slash MF buttons on the side, which allows you to switch between autofocus and manual focus. Right, so they're both quite useful. How long can I expect them to last? Well, both of them have metal mounts, which is great. That will definitely help. On the downside, neither of them has weather sealing, which is a problem, 
so I'd be careful not to use them in adverse weather. Whenever I purchase a new lens, I always buy a UV filter for it, as it helps protect the actual glass element. For example, my Canon RF 15-35mm lens, which is what I use to shoot most of my B-roll nowadays, has a Sigma ceramic UV filter on it, which never comes off. As soon as I took the lens out of the box, the filter went on. The filter itself is quite expensive, around 10% of the cost of a very expensive lens, but I think it's worth the investment. This also means I don't have to use lens caps, though they still fit on the filter if you choose to use them. If you do want to look into filters, the EFS 24mm lens has a filter size of 52mm, and the EF 50mm lens has a size of 49mm. This is not to be confused with their focal lengths. The filter size is just something you need to know when purchasing filters for them. In conclusion, which one should you buy? So, they're both nice lenses, though they are good for different things. Earlier in the review, I covered what they're each best at, so if you want a refresher, feel free to go through the review again. To put it simply though, if you want a lens for vlogging and you want to specifically choose between these two, the EFS 24mm lens would be better for the reasons outlined earlier. If you want a lens for video, where the camera would be on a tripod, the EF 50mm f1.8 lens would be better. In terms of photos, feel free to go back to the application section of the review in order to see which would be better depending on what you want to do. By the way, if you want to see how much these lenses cost where you are, I have affiliate links down below where you can check them out. If you've already learned a bit about photography and videography, and you'd like to graduate to something more mid-range, feel free to have a look at the lens review playlist on my channel. You can find links down below or click the card in the top right corner. I've reviewed all sorts of lenses, from the Canon EF 50mm f1.4 and EF 50mm f1.8 to the Canon RF 15-35mm f2.8 LIS-USM and Canon RF 85 f1.2 LUSM. Do you have any questions? Feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you'd like to purchase any of the items I've mentioned in this video or see how much they cost in your country, I have a link down below where you can view them. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and hit that bell. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.